a shake-up for juvenile justice. The days of Unit 18 at Casuarina Prison are numbered and it can't come soon enough. You see, Premier Roger Cook has a plan. I've got a plan so cunning you could put a tail on it and call it a weasel. Well, technically, he doesn't have a plan, but he does have a plan to come up with a plan. We should take this opportunity to look at the process that led to this problem. No, I preferred the first idea. That's not the time, Tony. And that's going to cost WA taxpayers... One million dollars. After months of criticism and the tragic suicide of Indigenous teenager Cleveland Dodd, the government has committed to fund a detailed plan and business case for a new facility. Business case? What kind of business locks up juveniles in an adult prison and only lets them out of their cells for an hour a day? What kind of business runs a facility where one in five detainees have attempted suicide? The only case you can make for an operation like that is close the f business. There's been a review. Yeah, which also conveniently put some distance between the Premier and Corrective Services Minister Paul Papalia and Cook's predecessor, Mark McGowan, whose attitude towards youth detainees was about as empathetic as a brick. The reasons they are in Banksy Hill before people start making excuses is multiple armed robberies and burglaries, rapes, some have killed people, stealing police cars and driving at police. They show no respect. That was said after a riot at Banksy Hill, which ended in some of those involved being moved to Unit 18 permanently. Cook, on the other hand, has been saying all the right things since assuming the top job. It's a necessary evil at the moment. But other than that, the Premier has been preaching the need to rehabilitate juvenile offenders, protect them from themselves and do so in a facility that's fit for purpose. Minister Papalier and his team have moved swiftly to engage with advocacy services, with people that can provide services to uh, the, the young detainees. Unit 18 opened in July 2022 as a desperation move by the WA Labor government and pretty much every person with an understanding of youth detention thought it was a bad idea. 18 months later, we still don't have a better option, just a review that recommended a plan to come up with a plan. And that's likely years before there's anything to show for it. We apologise. Take full responsibility and accept the consequences. Right. Okay. Or we deny, dispute and delay. Mm. Sorry, I don't follow you. Look, it's a step in the right direction, but don't forget this government has taken a lot of steps in the wrong direction first. They aren't the only ones. In news that will surprise exactly zero people, Elon Musk has done something stupid. What? Yes, I know, that doesn't narrow it down very much. I'm talking about an endorsement of an anti-Semitic post on his X platform earlier this month. The post said Jewish people were pushing hatred against white people. Musk replied, you have said the actual truth. It's the sort of comment a lot of idiots on X would make, but it carries a very different significance when it comes from the idiot who owns the social media platform. It's cost him. The trickle of companies pulling advertising from X is turning into a flood. Since Musk bought the platform last year, he's done his best to make it about as disgusting as the contents of Donald Trump's toilet bowl after a big day on the cheeseburgers and Diet Coke. That's a joke, obviously, because I'm pretty sure anyone who lives on cheeseburgers and Diet Coke hasn't had a decent shit in oh, years. yuck. <laughs> Anyway, it's Musk's verbal diarrhoea I'm interested in today, and it came out overnight at the New York Times' Deal Book Summit in New York. It started off OK when Musk admitted his anti-Semitic endorsement was the worst post in his history of messages, which includes a 2018 tweet that cost him 40 million US in fines. But then he showed any contrition on his part was only skin deep at best when he was asked what he thought of advertisers deserting him. If somebody's going to try to blackmail me with advertising, blackmail me with money, go f*** yourself. More than anything, this proves what has been obvious for a long time. Musk treats X like it's some kind of joke, like it's his personal plaything. And when things don't go his way, he has a tantrum and throws the toys out of the cot. Go <laughs> yourself. Is that clear? The only good thing about all of this is X is privately owned by Musk, so the person who stands to lose the most in all of this is him. What this advertising boycott is, uh, is, is going to do, it's, it's going to kill the company. Once upon a time, advertising was worth 90% of revenue to the platform, but I don't reckon there's enough paid blue ticks to cover the shortfall. So if no advertisers eventually means no X, well, that's less hatred, bigotry and stupidity in the world, and I won't lose any sleep over it. You're fired up today. While I'm on a roll, can I just quickly say I'm also freaking over the annual Spotify <laughs> wrapped. Like, I get it. You listen to Taylor Swift for more minutes than 99% of Spotify users. 
good for you. I don't need to see it on social media, and it doesn't make you cool. Ouch. In fact, this might come as a shock, but Tay Tay isn't the only musical artist on the planet worth listening to. Stop making friendship bracelets and broaden your horizons. Maybe not as broad as Arts Minister David Templeman and his annual end of year serenade to Parliament today, but you get my drift. I tell you, you don't know what it's like. I tell you, you don't know what it's like. That's your taxpayer dollars at work, folks. The West is best. But I really feel pity for parents at this difficult time. Their Spotify Wrapped was completely boned by the songs they've been playing endlessly to shut up their kids. <laughs> it's a magical time of year. Thoughts and prayers. But there are worse things to listen to. So I never got a ticket to you. I'm Ben O'Shea. For more up late, click the subscribe button below.